In our Sunrise Spotlight, we like to highlight great local people and organizations. And this morning, we're talking about an out-of-this-world job. <laughs> A Southeast Portland man is using his amateur radio hobby to connect local kids to the International Space Station. Keely Chalmers introduces us to Nico Payne. In a Southeast Portland neighborhood, you'll find it. It's pretty easy to spot. This is the home of Nico Payne, amateur ham radio operator, and this is his garage slash workshop. Yeah, not your typical garage shop. This is where Nico connects students to space, specifically the International Space Station. I've just been doing it for about a month now. Um, I've been waiting for my first contact and about two weeks ago I got my first and today was the third. Nico is what you call a telebridge operator. He volunteers his time and his pretty spectacular setup to make the connection. And uh, the children are, of course, they're awestruck by it, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience for them. Not a simple task, considering the space station is traveling at about 18,000 miles per hour. That's 25 times the speed of sound. It comes over our horizon like the sun does, but it sets in about 10 minutes. So we have 10 minutes to get 15 or 20 student questions in before the space station disappears over the horizon. All thanks to that huge antenna. And it rotates up and down and around so it can actually point at the space station as it flies overhead. Portland's location on the West Coast is ideal for this kind of contact. I feel really lucky to be at 45 degrees north. With the space station only about 200 miles above the Earth, Payne first calls the astronauts on the radio. November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra from November Alpha 7 Victor scheduled contact. And November Alpha 7 Victor, this is November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra. I hear you loud and clear. Over. Then, in what is sort of like a Zoom meeting, connects them with a school over a telephone line. This past Monday, that school was Newcastle High School in Wyoming. How long did it take you to fully adjust to being on the ISS? Over. Hey, Trinity, before I get going, I just want to say hi to all of the Newcastle High School uh, students. So we've been working on this for about 18 months. The school was one of only a handful chosen to connect with the space station this year. Students got about 10 minutes to ask Commander Michael Hopkins questions. It was 10 minutes they won't soon forget. What research is currently being conducted? Over. Yeah, James, uh, we're, we are doing a ton of science up here. What was it like to talk to an astronaut on the International Space Station? I mean, it was fairly interesting. I know that it's a, like, it's a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity. So he's just a normal guy. You think like, oh, he's an astronaut. He's kind of a rock star. He is just a normal guy who just has a really cool day job. And it was all made possible by a stranger some 1,200 miles away. The best thing we can say is thank you. It is awesome that there are amateur radio operators that are able to dedicate their time and equipment to help other people. For Nico, it's a chance to not only help, but to inspire the next generation of scientists and get to do something, let's face it, we'd all love to do. The uh, space station has passed over the horizon. Oh, I think it's like anybody. It's just like me. Uh, it's kind of wondrous. I. I think about the fact that we can talk to somebody orbiting in space all the time, and it's, uh, I never lose the wonder of that. I just feel really lucky to be able to do it. Keely Chalmers, KGW News. So NICO there is part of a program called ARIS, which stands for Amateur Radio International Space Station. It's a worldwide group of volunteers, and the really cool part here is that any school can apply to connect with the space station. They have an application at the ARIS, A-R-I-S-S. -S. Website. That is so awesome. Good for them. All right.